What's up creators, today we're returning to the Airlag series and we're going to try to replicate the color grading of the profile, the Ferros. Now this profile is wedding photography mixed in with a moody brown color grade and it was a suggestion by one of you guys in the comment section on a previous video. So if you have any other styles that we need to break down, I'm going to incentivize you guys as always to put it down in the comment section and I'll check them out. So first of all, we're going to jump into Instagram, check out the profile and the main characteristics that define the color grading. Then we're going to apply that knowledge in Lightroom when we're editing a photo and creating a preset out of it. So let's jump into it. So creators, here we have the Ferros profile on Instagram, the Ferros with a double R if you want to go and follow them. Nikon Vinix, a couple that shoot wedding photography. And if you're into that stuff, this style is just fantastic. Now, we're not going to pay too much attention to their latest post because their style or the color grading jumps from a post to post. We have black and white, then we have sepia black and white, then we have color, then we have sunset, then we have orangey, then we have... We need to go further down to find their more consistent style and their main color grading. So down here, you can see that these images, all of them, they are very similar to each other. They're shot in a similar manner, in similar environments, and edited in the exact same way. This color grading look, I would classify it as a dark moody brown. Well, moody because all these images are shot in similar environments, whether it be in misty day, overcast, rainy day, or just after sunset in very dark or cold environments. And then they're contrasting this cold with warmth added in the color grading. This brownish tint, whether it be in the highlight shadows, or in the midtone, they're adding this brownish tint to contrast the environment. So it's a very interesting color grading. Now let's jump into the characteristics of the style before we start editing. So first of all, let's talk about the exposure and contrast. And all these images, they're very dim compared to a natural image. They're not too punchy or too contrasty. Highlights are reduced. Therefore, we have an even light being distributed throughout the faces of the models. And if we take a broader look in the wider shots, most of their broader or wider images are in fantastic landscapes. You can notice how the highlights are very well preserved in the dress of the bride, but also in the sky. This is an overcast day. And when you're shooting overcast and you're emphasizing your attention into the model, the sky is just gonna be a white sheet with no detail. And right here we can see basically the details in the clouds. And that's indication that they're reducing the highlights and the whites in the in the basic corrections or the tone grid. Now, opposite to that, the shadows do have some information, but the blacks are very crushed. We're reducing the impact of the blacks, so we have less information over there. We can basically see no difference between the trousers and the jacket of the brooms in all of the images. So crush the blacks and preserve the highlights. We need to keep that in mind. And then when it comes to color, apart from the brownish tint that we're adding, notice how the blue tones, the aquas, the purples, the magentas, all of those colors are completely gone. The background, this is image is shot in the Dolomites and you can see how the snow in the background, well, it should have a bit of a bluish or aqua tint because it's a very cold environment. It's completely desaturated. So what they're doing is reducing the attention on the cold tones. So the warm tones have a lot more perseverance or a lot more dominance. And notice how the only cold tones that we can see in the image are the greens. And instead of preserving the natural greens of the pines, they're taking them towards the oranges or towards the yellows. Basically, this forest looks dead. So they're really just making a very monochromatic palette. And of course, the brown in the clothing, in the boat really nails their point that they want to emphasize the warmer tones. Now that we're here, also the skin tones are a bit altered. They're not very natural. You can notice how they have a bit of an orangey tint to them and that's done in camera calibration. Now, in other images, they go ham with the style. They go way over with the warmth. Like in these images, this is basically a sepia black and white image with a lot of saturation in the warmer tones. And in other cases, you can notice how they take away the brown the moody brown and they're just left with the moody image with the same contrast that we were talking about and the same alterations to the saturation of the blues they're basically gone and the greens toward the warmer tones but this is just another variant on the style so it's a very nice style very consistent that is uh, able to be applied in a more intense manner or in a more of a subtle manner in their photographs so that's enough for the analysis. Now let's jump into Lightroom and start color grading. But as always, guys, I have to remind you that the presets that we're going to create today, there are going to be two of them. They're going to be added into the Edit Like Preset Pack V3. Link up here if you want to check them out. In that preset pack, I'm going to continue to add all the presets that we create in the series throughout this season. So as we continue to analyze more styles, more will be added. And that's a great way you can skip all my tutorials. And also, if not, just a way that you can support me so I can continue to do videos for you guys. So if you can't support me that manner, I'd be really thankful. If not, let's jump into Lightroom and start color grading. So creators, once in Lightroom, I have this little collection. I notice how none of these images are wedding shots. 
Why? Because I'm not a wedding photographer. It's not a world that I'm gonna dive into, nor I have done it in the past. But remember that the purpose of this tutorial is to replicate the color grading, not the shot. So what I'm gonna do is just select any random image. I think this one with D on your keyboard, you can move into the develop module. Now, this image obviously isn't the best in the world. It's a self-portrait. I'm not, not even in focus. My watch is in focus, but we do have the colors that we want to modify. In the background, we have the blues and the aquas. We have an overcast day. We have the greens and also we have the skin tones. So it's gonna be a good base to create the Moody preset. So first of all, let's open up our editing tab over here. What we want to do is achieve the exposure and contrast. And for that, we're gonna use the basic corrections over here, highlight shadows, whites and blacks in combination with the tone curve. These two tools can basically do exactly the same thing, but the display is quite different. So for example, right here, we have the image divided into four parts, highlights, whites, shadows and blacks. But in the tone curve, we can add as many points and divide it as many times as we want by adding more points in our exposure over here. So they do the same, but we can also use them as different layers to our exposure and contrast. And that's the way I like to work. Now, just to change it up a bit, normally I start off with the basic corrections and then complement with the tone curve. Today, we're gonna to start off with the tone curve and then find detail with the sliders of the basic corrections. Now, the tone curve that we have over here, this is the point tone curve, not to be confused with the parametric over here, is a very powerful tool that allows us to change the exposure on our image. And it's a very complex tool. I already made a tutorial about it, link up here if you wanna check it out. But in essence, you can look at it as this graph at the top, we have the bright parts of the exposure at the bottom, the dark parts, and this line, the tone curve itself is just a representation on our image in this graph. So we can basically just play around with our image to change the exposure of different parts of it. So it takes a lot of time to master a lot of practice, but in this case, what we're interested in doing is reducing the highlights, reducing the whites, making a flatter exposure, but also raising those blacks to fade them up just a bit and in the process, creating that contrast in the shadows, what we saw in the example images. First of all, this point over here will control the bright parts on our image. Just gonna drag it down, something around those lines. And as you can see, this point has also coordinates in our graph. So the input is the X axis 255, the output is 228. You can also input these with your numeric keyboard. Then I'm gonna create a point in the highlights and I'm just gonna drag it down. And notice how our highlights are very well preserved now compared to the original image. So we're just gonna drag them down just a bit, something around these lines. The value is gonna be 173 and 125 in the output. And we're just basically reducing the amount of exposure in the bright parts on our image. We can deactivate this and see how everything is a bit more dim and a bit more dull. Then I'm gonna create a point over here in the shadows or the midtones, and I'm just gonna place it just a little bit above around the 104 and 73 in the output, just raising the shadow just a bit uh, so they're not too dark. And then this point at the bottom will control the blacks. And just as a reminder that the blacks weren't pure blacks, they're a bit grayed out. So what I'm gonna do is just put it up in the vertical axis without moving it to the right or to the left. Just move it up. And as you can see, the blacks are turned into gray. Now this is way too much. I'm gonna go with a value around the plus 20s. You guys can go a bit further down if you wanna be, have uh, blacks a bit more punchy. But in this case, I like them like this. So we can deactivate the tone curve by clicking this button on and off. This is before and after and the change is very dramatic. We can see how the image is a lot darker and the highlights are very well preserved, but also fading out those blacks in comparison to a very contrasty image. Now, one thing that we're missing is that the blacks need to be a bit more contrasty. And for that, we're just gonna complement our edit with the basic correction. So right here, the shadows, I'm just gonna drag them towards the negatives, not towards the positives, otherwise we we'll introduce more light towards the negatives. So we have a punchier looking contrast. And then the blacks here, you guys can go ahead and add more contrast, like around the minus fifties. As you can see, we're adding a lot more punch into the image, similar to some of the images that we saw, but I'm just gonna leave it a bit more conservative. So this preset is a bit more useful. I'm just gonna go around the minus 25s as well. So we have a contrasty looking image, but not too harsh. So it's a bit more useful. Okay, so that's it for the exposure and contrast. Now let's move down to the color grading. And the first thing that we want to do is change our overall palette. Remember that we want to reduce the saturation on the blues, on the aquas, and also change our greens into these warmer tones. So the tool that we're gonna use is Color Mixer, and you may recognize it as HSL. So in HSL, we can basically change the hue, saturation, and the luminance of every tone. Now, we're gonna start off by reducing the cool tones. So saturation on the blues and the aquas, just gonna go around the minus 60s for the blues and the minus 65s in the aquas. We don't want these colors at all on our image. Immediately you can notice how the blues in the background have largely disappeared. 
and this is very dramatic but it was exactly what we were looking for then the greens just going to bring them down just a bit or the minus 30 and the yellows as you can see control also a lot of the lighter green so as well towards the negatives or in the minus 30 as well then in hue what i'm going to do is just change the greens and the yellows more towards the warmer tones we don't want to go towards the positives otherwise we obtain more emerald light greens instead we want to go towards the negatives just around the minus 70s for both of them and immediately you can notice the difference we have these overall burnt greens in the background compared to the original image. Now, finally, in HSL, what I'm gonna do is just brighten up a bit of the skin tones. This is something that I saw in some of the example images where the skin glowed quite a bit. And this is something that you can do on field, maybe using a diffusion filter and pointing a light towards the skin, or you can do it by retouching, but also you can do it by changing up the luminance of certain tones. So as you can see in the luminance tab, the skin that I have over here is controlled mostly by the oranges, as you can see, I'm affecting a lot of the skin and also a bit of the red. So these two tones will control most of the skin tones of the general population. So you can use uh, just a bit of uh, luminance over here on the plus 25s just to brighten up the skin tones and ensure that they are highlighted. Now, of course, this is a step completely optional because, well, maybe it's an undesired effect for some of you guys. Now, talking about skin tones, one thing that we saw in the example images is that the skins were tending a bit more towards the oranges. So I'm going to go down to camera calibration and this tool is severely powerful but we're not going to use it in a very heavy manner we're just going to change a bit of the red primary not towards the negatives otherwise we change towards the magentas but change them a bit towards the positives notice how they change towards the yellows now this is way too much it looks like i have jaundice but maybe just a bit around the 20s is going to be enough again i'm going to go with a value around 25 and this is before and after it's a very subtle change just changing a bit of the skin tones to this uniform orangey palette. Okay, so right now we have a very moody and dramatic image, but still we need to add that brownish tint in the shadows and in the mid tones. But before that, I'm gonna save this preset to apply it into scenarios where maybe we don't want to add such an intense moody brown look. So we're gonna save it by going to the left panel over here, hit the plus sign, create a preset. I remember that right here, we're gonna name it and we do not want to mark any of the values that we didn't use. So for example, we didn't use exposure, white balance and contrast, nor detail, lens corrections, nor transform. Just gonna, not gonna select them, so the preset is gonna omit them. So I'm just gonna create it. And briefly, before we jump into creating the brownish tint, just let's see the preset, how it performs in other scenarios. So right here, I have this image of my friend Kevin. Let's apply the preset over here. So we have Moody, and there we have the before and after, and you can see how the blues are very desaturated, the greens are a lot warmer, and the skin tones are a lot more orange, but in particular, pay attention how the image is a lot more dim, and the highlights are a lot more well-preserved. So it's looking very nice. Let's see in this image where I'm about to commit suicide in the side of a volcano. And let's see the preset. And you can notice how it's a lot darker compared to the original image. And the blues in my pants are a bit desaturated. And the greens, well, we don't have too much greens over here, but they're a bit warmer than in the original image. But I think we did quite a good job. You can obviously play around with the contrast over here, the exposure and contrast that we didn't include in the preset. So these are always going to be at zero, but you can always add more contrast right here or play around with the exposure if you want a more of a dramatic image over here. Also, you can play around with the amount slider over here of the preset to intensify all the values or make it a bit more subtle. So this is a great tool to apply your preset into different scenarios. Also, my apologies if you can perceive the cicada sounds in the background. I live near the forest and this room isn't very isolated, so you can basically hear that very distracting noise. Not ideal conditions for recording. So let's create the Moody Brown preset. Now, the Moody Brown preset is basically the same one that we just did. We're just gonna move down to color grading, uh, previously known as split toning. And right here, we can basically add a color into the shadows, into the midtones, or into the highlights. So you guys can play around. I'm gonna add these tones into the shadows and into the midtones, but you can also make a combination with the shadows and the highlights or the highlights and the midtones, depending on what you want. Now, we don't have brown in our color wheel over here. So what we have to do is just mix a bit of the oranges and a bit of the reds to achieve that brownish tint. So in the shadows, I'm just gonna add a bit of saturation to see uh, the color that we're working with and find the correct one. I'm gonna go a bit more towards the yellowish. Maybe the hue is gonna be 47. I don't think the saturation is too much. Maybe around the 10% is just gonna be enough. And you can notice how the image is being painted with this orangey tone. And then in the midtones, I'm going to combine that orange with a bit of red. So the hue is going to be 24 around this. And again, the saturation around 10%. And 
and now you can see how those two colors are combining to create this sort of uh, brown effect in our background so we can deactivate this before and after and you can see the change immediately how our, our image is turning into this moody brown look so again you guys can play around with the amount of saturation and where you're placing the hues maybe in the highlights maybe in the mid-toes i'm just going to leave it like that i'm going to save it and see how it performs in other images so again left panel hit the plus sign create preset okay so how about this image it's a bit overexposed but let's see how the preset performs so here we have the moody and then the moody brown and adds this warmth into the image it's looking very nice with those uh, greens tending towards the desaturation and the warmer tones and we have that brownish tint added into all parts of the image just looking fantastic how about in this portrait let's add the moody this is the moody it's looking quite nice very controlled highlights and then the moody brown set this warmth into the image and it works quite well for the skin tones and of course if you guys want a bit more of a punchier look you can always add some contrast in the general tabs over here just added a bit more contrast so it's a bit more dramatic and obviously being portrait photography there's a whole nother step which is the retouching we can uh, eliminate imperfections just breaking up the skin tones all those things and um yeah it's looking quite nice now one thing that a lot of people ask me is what's the difference between using the color grading tab to add these warm tones and using the general slider of temperature that we have all the way at the top now we can reset over here the color grading and we can apply some temperature over here and we can achieve a similar type effect but the problem is with temperature you can't split your image into shadows midtones and highlights you basically just affect the entire image so it's a bit more imprecise now the second factor that temperature has is that the kelvin of each image the metadata that comes from camera will vary depending from photo from photo for example i shoot mostly all of my images in auto white balance because i'm lazy so the kelvin or the base kelvin of my image is always shifting so right here i have this 5725 kelvin applied to achieve this orange but in some in another image it may be too much or maybe isn't enough and our image is a bit cooler or a bit warmer so it's not a very precise tool that's why i like to leave it uh, at zero and not include it in the preset so i think we replicated the coloring quite correctly you can always play around with the contrast right here if you want a punchier looking image uh, i didn't want to go too harsh on the contrast so this preset is a bit more useful but the final test of this preset is to apply it into a wedding shot in a moody day so I don't have those types of images, but I know some of you guys are wedding photographers in the community and maybe you can play around with this preset and see how it performs and leave us the comments down below. Before I go guys, I have to remind you that the presets that we created today, I've already added them into the Edit Like Chris Pack V3, link up here if you want to check it out, and also the Edit Like LUT Pack V3. So I've reconverted all these presets into LUT so you can apply them into your video work as well. So if you're interested in supporting me, check out my shop up there. I'm very thankful if you can buy anything from there um, so I can continue to do videos for you guys. If not, don't worry, just like the video and share it. That really helps me out. I'm Tony Fuentes, just to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.